Hi, my name is David Yang. I'm the CEO of FullSec Academy. And th today I want to share one weird trick that really does work for helping you learn programming faster and better. And that one weird trick is something that we at FullSec called Teach to Learn. And Teach to Learn really is this idea that comes out of the academic research that when you teach something, you learn that a lot better than when you're just trying to absorb it or even just using it. So I'll start with, we found this idea many years ago when we were looking up research on education and we found this thing called the learning pyramid. And the learning pyramid is something that I think anecdotally matches our own personal experience, right? When we sit in a lecture, we tend to retain a lot less information than when we're doing homework or when we're doing demonstrations or we're talking about it in a group study and or we're, or we're practicing itself, right? So labs can be much more effective a way of learning than just sitting in a lecture and learning, especially with topics like physics or chemistry. But what I hadn't realized or what I hadn't remembered that much is because we don't have that much opportunity in school is teaching others. So if you look at this chart, 90% retention rate from teaching others versus 5% from lecture. Now, when we saw this, Nim and I thought we have to use this as much as possible in our boot camp if we want to be effective, right? Because it's all about boot camps are all about speed and retention. So, okay, so that was our initial thought is there's this learning pyramid. How do we activate teaching others as much as possible? Now, the first thing we did was we really started sprinkling the ability and opportunity to teach throughout the full stack program. So we started out with, okay, let's activate. The first thing we do is just activate discussion because discussion is you know the beginning of teaching, trying to talk to someone else about what you're trying to do. And so we do pair programming everywhere. Now, for those of you who don't know what pair programming is, it's really two people working on one computer or working next to each other and trying to solve the same problem. And typically one person will be typing and one person will be driving. Uh, sorry, one person will be driving, which is typing and working on the, on the code, and one person will be navigating. And the reason that there's this driver and navigator is that the driver is trying to work on basic low level stuff like, you know, is our our function spelled correctly? Is our syntax correct? Well the navigator is trying to teach or trying to architect the app at a higher level and teach that his thinking, his or her thinking to the to the the, the driver or, or the programmer. Now pair programming is everyone in our program and that really helps students start talking and thinking about code. Second of all, we have opportunities for students to do what we call personal enrichment projects. So that's, they write essays, they do videos, they give presentations to each other. And this really gives them a chance to be an expert in one very specific topic, right? What I tell students all the time is that it's very hard to be a general expert, but it's not that hard to be an expert for 10 minutes on any on particular subject. And so students do a lot of presentations on technical topics throughout the program. Now, and we've seen this has really worked, right? A lot of our students tell us the time I learned the most is when I was pairing or really trying to explain something to somebody else. So this teaching to learn mechanic is where we get a lot of retention in our program. Now, I want to share some of my thoughts on why this works. Because if you're like me, I'm of the mindset of, yes, yeah, something works, but if I don't understand why it works, I don't necessarily believe that it's working, right? And so... Or I believe that maybe it's just a placebo effect that we're finding in, in the research. So I have a few anecdotes to share here. One, one of the early things that I learned in programming that I thought was the silliest thing, but I tried it and it seems to work, is something called rubber duck debugging. Now, rubber duck debugging, here's a Wikipedia page, is this idea that you just keep a rubber duck next to your computer, and when you have a problem or a bug you can't solve, you just try to explain it line by line to your rubber duck. Now, the reason people think it works is because you just start talking and it, it activates a different part of your brain. And this really helps oftentimes because, you know, you've all had that experience of, I'm stuck on a problem, I go try to explain to somebody, and before they even hear the whole thing, like, oh, you know what, forget it, I, I think I solved it myself. So just talking it out really helps helps you activate a different part of your brain. Now, the second thing is, and I learned this from one of our instructors, Corey, who is a uh, neuroscientist before he joined FullSec is this idea of the the cortical homunculus and what it is is a uh, and you know a warning for those who are grossed out by certain things is this picture of how our brain how the nerves in the brain are the amount of processing power dedicated to certain parts of the body and you see here you know we have a huge amount of processing power in our hands and a huge amount in our mouth, right? Because these are really the parts that take a lot of brain power for us to activate. So of course, if you're typing, you're activating the, the sensors in your hands, but you're really leaving a huge part of your body, uh, of your brain, unactivated by not talking it out. So my guess is just, you know, I know nothing about the neurology of programming, but as you're talking, 
you're activating other parts of your brain that are starting to connect things or just shoot off, you know, signals to other parts of your brain that, that are connecting things for you. And finally, you know, I think that, I'll close, I'll close this out. I think that, you know, now as a parent and watching my own kids grow up, one thing I notice is that talking is the last thing that they develop, right? They develop fine motor skills pretty early on. So they can, you can watch a one-year-old, 18-month-year-old start tinkering with things with their fingers pretty exquisitely, right? They can manipulate little things, they can put together small pieces, but it's not really until 18 to 24 months that they start talking with their mouth in more sophisticated ways. So my guess is that, you know, similar to the homunculus, our brain really takes a lot of development for it to develop the ability to to speak language and you know as you as you know we're really one of the rare species on this planet that have developed the ability for language and that's what many people think separates us from you know from all the other animals so for many years teach to learn has been an effective part of full stacks programming i've really seen it effective for not only our our students but also for our instructors when we prepare a lesson plan when we get ready to go in front of the classroom when we train instructors It isn't until they get in front of the stage, they get in front of a bunch of other academics, that you start to see the things really connect in their mind. And I think a little bit of it is that it's just, you can't, you can hold ideas in your brain in kind of an amorphous shape, but you can't serialize those, you can't put those into sentences when you don't understand them in a more crystal clear way. So take the time to talk it out, take the time to try to teach to others. Now, and finally, I found some research uh, that... I think it was uh, done at George Washington on the use of students creating video to teach others. And what I found really interesting was that there was pretty strong statistical evidence to support the idea that students who made videos, who tried to teach the material, retain the information a lot better, especially in topics like computer science. So I'll share links to all that stuff below, share links to the paper, share links to the learning pyramid so you can check it out for yourself. Now, what are the easy ways to start, right? If you're doing it on your own, if you're learning how to program, I think the easiest way to start is to keep a learning journal. At the end of every session, spend 10 minutes to write down what you learned and try to explain it in plain words. I, I really like what Hemingway said about writing is that never finish when you feel completely spent. Always finish when you feel like the next sentence is right there. So when you start tomorrow, you feel like you're already ready to go. And keeping a journal is a great way to simulate that because you, as you're starting to write it, you're really setting up your mind for that next programming session. You explain to yourself what I learned today and what I'm ready for next. The second thing, of course, is write on public services like Medium. I think everyone should write articles on what they're learning and share with as many people as you can. Post on your Facebook, post on your LinkedIn. Not only is it good for your learning process, but as you're looking for a job or looking to upgrade upgrade your career, it's a great thing to have is, hey, check out this list of articles I've written. There are a ton of students who've gotten great jobs at top tech companies because the recruiter looked at their Medium or their LinkedIn profile and saw this person wrote a bunch of articles on different data structures. That's the kind of person we want working for us, even if they're junior in their experience. The third thing to do is work with a friend and make pairing a priority in your learning, right? And so don't just, you know, sit in a Starbucks together and try to learn code. Really sit and say, we're going to go at the same pace, work on the same thing. In fact, I often think get one monitor, two keyboards, one computer. And that really forces a discipline around a hey, one person has to type, a one person has to kind of be the, the, the navigator, be thinking. Some more advanced things to do are give talks at meetups in your local area. A lot of our students go give talks at meetups and this is not like a 30-minute talk where you're going deep into the, the minutia of a specific t- subject. A lot of meetups will have what, what they call lightning talks, which is a 5-10 minute talk. So pick a new technology or something that you find interesting or even just a really small NPM library and say, this library is really interesting for this reason. And give a talk in that library. And finally, of course, the best thing to do is start teaching others, right? Start a YouTube channel talking about your journey in learning how to code. I think this is something that I've seen people do and they go from zero to a hundred very quickly. And it's just, it's amazing to watch that. And it also is a great way to document your own journey. And finally, I want to share an article by a former full stack student who is now done some, he's grown at an incredible rate. So he came to full stack, um, of course, very sharp. And his name was Sean Wang. And he wrote an article called Learn in Public. And what I really love about this article is that it explains a lot of this teach to learn stuff, but it talks about, A, how to do it, and why it creates value for not only the community, but but for yourself. 
And learn in public is just something that is a great phrase of what I, I personally take as teach to learn, right? How do you learn in an effective way and not be afraid of sharing with others what you're learning, right? A lot of it, and I think he captures well, a lot of the reason we don't want to do these things is because we're afraid of people judging us. But I guarantee you, people love to watch others learn and experience that for themselves and experience it uh, with those people. So check out this article, Learn in Public. Sean went from graduating full stack. I think he gives talks at React conferences all the time now. He's He worked at some amazing companies and he's working at, a, I think, either Gatsby or don't quote me on this. He's working at one of these new Jamstack startups um, and it's really cool stuff that, that he's working on. So his acceleration, I think, is really captured by his his thought process of how do you learn and make that public so you can learn as fast as possible. All right, so that's the one weird trick to learn a lot faster is really teaching others. So take this opportunity, set up your Medium blog, start a YouTube channel, or just get a friend and say, we're going to commit to pairing. All this stuff will make your learning journey a lot faster. Music